What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. This week's video is going to be about axolotl sicknesses, illnesses and how really to prevent them in the first place. So I hope you've all had a great week, it's been a fun one here, very excited for next week's video but that's all I'm going to say on that for now, we'll talk more about that later on. So first things first, I want to put out a warning. Warning. The stunts in this movie were performed by professionals, so for your safety and the protection of those around you... No, 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 not that sort of warning. More, okay, more of a disclaimer. I am not a medical vet. I am trained in 0% of that side of the profession. I am purely a breeder and a keeper who's had slight experiences with axolotl sicknesses and illnesses, but if I'm honest, very, very few. And the reason I've managed to prevent them is just by taking jolly good care of my axolotls. Now, I'm not suggesting if you've stumbled across this video looking for a bit of help and advice that you haven't been, but I tend to find if you regiment your keeping, then usually it does prevent things like fungus, skin trouble, water parameter spikes, all that funky stuff that kind of comes with it. It does help keep your axolotl in really good shape. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Let's go, come on. So first things first, when you come across a sick axolotl, you have to first look at the symptoms. At the end of the day, nobody knows your axolotl like you know your axolotl. So you'll notice things like loss of appetite, slow lethargic personality, if that's not usually how they are. On the flip side of that, if they suddenly start thrashing around in the tank without any real reason, then obviously you're gonna pick up on that as the keeper. You know your axolotl better than anybody does. So the first thing you need to do is check things that are really obvious, like water parameters. I run water checks every other week, just to make sure that my water parameters are good, so my ammonia levels are good, my nitrite and my nitrate levels are balanced too. And then that way I can help prevent any kind of crazy spikes in the water parameters, which will cause, or at least possibly will cause, your axolotl to act out of character. So always check those. The next thing you wanna be doing is running regular water checks and water changes too. So again, I change about 30% of my tank water each and every week, even if it looks crystal clear, because use things like ammonia and nitrites and nitrates don't show in the water by eye. You have to do water checks to obviously check their parameters. So I find taking out 30% of the tank's water each and every week, topping back up with cold, fresh, treated water does help keep everything in check. So now we've got that bit out of the way, what's next? What do we look for next? First thing you're gonna notice of an axolotl which might raise a slight concern is the infamous curled gills. People say online that this is a sign that they're sick or they're stressed, and it very well can be, but it's not always the case. Sometimes to do it when they're curious. For example, this photo here, one of my favorites. This is when I very first got one of those charger adapter things that you connect to the end of your wire, a little axolotl mm -hmm. one, and I used to pop it on the side of the tank where the axolotls used to stay. And within moments of them finding it, they both went over it curiously looking as to what it was. I think they were probably working out if it was food or not. But again, the curled gills are there. They were there for about 20 minutes, just constantly fixated on this thing. It was just curiosity. So curled gills short term is a sign of curiosity, not always stress or worry. Um, curled gills can mean that they're very sick or very, very stressed about something. And it's usually to do with the water. So if you have a filter in there, maybe your filter is kicking out too much current whether it be the outtake or the intake, the uh, axolotls do like calm water. So if you've got an unbalanced tank where your axolotl is kind of getting dragged about, that little dance, or the water intake is putting out too fast, it can cause concern for your axolotl, hence the curled gills. Another one that you'll find is a kink tail too, where the tail normally sits nice and straight when they're chilling at the bottom of the tank. If it's got a curl in it, that can be a sign of like the curled gill syndrome where they're stressed, there, something's upsetting them. But again, it's not always the case too. I tend to find that my axolotls tend to do a figure of eight in their tank, and then when they stop to rest for a moment or two, they do have a curled tail. It's just where they've landed, and then they're getting ready to turn back around before they start swimming again, or walking, whichever they decide to do. So don't instantly see something like that and panic. Just monitor it and make sure it is a long-term thing, and if it is, then check things like your water parameters, your water temperatures is very important too and of course your intake and outtake in regards to your filter. Skin issues are also a problem when it comes to axolotl keeping. Now there's various, various things that it could be. Normally it's a thing called fungus. Fungus is very obvious, you usually see it, it looks like little balls of cotton wool. Yeah, hate the stuff. It usually looks like little balls of cotton wool on the gills. It usually starts on the gills. It can spread down the body and to the tail, but usually the usual starting point is on the gills. And like I said, it's very, very obvious. It looks like little balls of candy floss almost. And it will, if it's left, it will keep growing. 
it'll become really intrusive, it'll irritate and itch the axolotl and sometimes it just falls off, but that means it's still gonna keep growing back. Now I've never had any experience with this myself, again, just by good husbandry skills. So now I suggest from this point of view, I would do massive water changes. And I would also treat the axolotl away from his tank. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of treating the axolotl inside of his tank. And if he's got tank mates or he's got plants or anything like that, not even that, the filter too, you're gonna throw all sorts of unbalance into your aquarium. The best thing you can do is remove the sick axolotl, pop them in a good sized tub, and do all your treatments from there. But what treatments can you do? You can use salt baths. Now I've never, again, I've never had any experience with this, so I can't really guide you because it's not something I've ever had to do, but what I've read online, you do so many days on and then so many days off, and it does eventually clear out the fungus. Obviously make sure it is fungus that you're treating first and foremost and you're pretty much concerned and convinced that it is. And then follow a guide which I'll link in the description on how to safely salt bath your axolotl. You can also use teas as well, tea leaves and stuff like that. Again, I'll leave all the information below. I won't go into too much depth on this video because I want to just kind of break down what illnesses your axolotl can get. Another one that you might come across is wounds and injuries on your axolotl. Now, these things do happen. If you have a lot of decor in your tank, there's a very good chance that your axolotl is gonna snag himself on there. Again, how do you stop this? This is down to prevention. If you have ornaments or decorations inside of your tank, make sure there's no rough edges, nothing where your axolotl can kind of cut himself or injure himself or get himself stuck, worst case scenario. The way I tend to do this is when I buy something new, whether it be a hide, whether it be a plant, whatever it might be, I check it on my forearm. So that's pretty delicate, as you can probably tell. And I gently rub it against my arm. And if it causes any kind of irritation or it hurts or it, or it, or it scratches or it catches on anything, apart from the hairs, obviously, then obviously I would not use that particular item in my axolotl tank. Now, if your axolotl has got tank mates, i.e. another axolotl, because that's really all you should really have in there with him, then the chances are you're going to get the occasional nip. Now, axolotls don't usually do this out of aggression. It's usually done out of curiosity. They see something move and the belly's rumbling and think, oh, food! And they go for it and they gun for it, shall we say. And that can lead to the odd nip out of a tail, the odd toe missing. It's very rare that it does happen, for me anyway, on my experience. It doesn't happen very often. In fact, it hasn't happened in months, but it can happen. The best way to treat this is obviously make sure that the axolotl is not getting bullied by his tank mates or make sure the offending item, i.e. a hide or a plant or whatever it might be, is taken away from there. Obviously not the axolotl, keep the axolotls together, they'll be fine. Just monitor them, make sure they're not bullying one another. Nice, fresh, clean water each and every week, treated water of course. And then over time your axolotl will heal and hopefully grow back whatever he's got missing. Another one you're gonna probably find is an axolotl that likes to float at the very surface of his tank. This is the one that people contact me about the most and they instantly go, help, what do I do? I Googled it and apparently I should put him in the fridge. Do I put him in the fridge? And I'm like, no, slow down, it's fine, don't worry. Don't panic yourself just yet. Now there is a treatment known as fridging. Um, I have zero experience with this, I've never had to use it. So basically, axolotls like cold temperatures. When they get bloated or constipated, which is usually the sign of the floating, or they could just be chilling, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then what you tend to do is you change out a percentage of the water, and over time the coldness helps relieve the pressure in the stomach, and nine times out of 10 that I will let the gas go, which essentially does fart, or they will have a poop which again will bring all the gas and the, all the tightness and all the irritation in the belly down and they will again sink. Um, but axolotls don't always mean that the sick when they're floating. My axolotls tend to do that for fun. They love it. They come up, they've got loads of air and in the next 10 minutes you'll see them start floating about. And the reason I know this is done by them having fun is if I startle them, they'll instantly burp out the air and instantly sink straight back down. So don't instantly think, oh no, he's floating, what's up with him? Why is he floating? Can he not get back down to the bottom? He probably can. He's probably just having a moment of enjoying himself at the top of the surface. But it can mean bloating or floating can mean bloating and constipation. Two signs that I look for in constipation is first, loss of appetite. I'll get there in the end. First things first, loss of appetite. If they stop eating and they're floating, he probably has got troubles passing his food. Now, don't instantly panic and cause concern and instantly jump to the fridge idea because again, it's not necessarily, need, not necessarily needed. How I tend to do things is I'll either separate the axolotl in question, pop them into a reasonably sized tank with cooler water, and then usually he'll poop because it kind of triggers them, the, the act, it activates them to poop. Or I will, 
just do a water change on the whole tank. If I'm due one, let's say it was on a Thursday and I'm doing a water change on a Monday, I might just do an early water change and the cold water will usually activate them and make them poop, which then will eliminate the problem. Uh, the second thing you'll notice about them is their legs, rather than sit soundly like that beside them, they'll tend to stretch out and go like that, which is usually a sign of them trying to take a little bit of pressure off the stomach, and I can only imagine. Loss of appetite and the stretched out legs, they're usually a clear sign of either bloating or constipation. And then it's just a case of running cold water into the tub or the tank. Obviously always treat the water and usually nine times out of 10, that will correct itself over a space of a day or two, maybe three at a very long push. Now, of course, if it's a bit further or a bit more serious than constipation, they can have something called impaction, which is basically when their gut fills with either food or things they probably shouldn't have ate shouldn't have eaten and it causes them more concern which is the first thing you'll notice straight away is a lethargic axolotl he won't be moving very much not like he normally would if he's the sort of character like mine that will come and greet you in the morning then all of a sudden he stops doing that he's got the legs thing that i told you about his legs sticking up and he's floating or staying very low at the bottom and not moving very much loss of appetite he could have some impaction which is basically a horrible sign it's like it's almost like constipation but it's a bit more serious now i would still use the water technique here the cold water should help relieve the pressure and hopefully over a couple of days should help him go to the bathroom too now if this doesn't work and you're still majorly concerned then obviously i absolutely stress you go and see an exotic pet not an exotic pet i don't think a parrot would know what to do in that situation give him a cracker Go and see an exotic vet. <laughs> Meant to be a serious video, this is what am I doing? Go and see an exotic vet because at the end of the day, if you're for your own peace of mind and for the safety and the well-being of your axolotl, I always recommend if you've got any major concerns, don't DIY it by Google. Go over and see an exotic vet, not a pet. And that's pretty much your average how to do things. I mean, like I said, I've never had any major illnesses touch wood in regards to my axolotls. I've been quite fortunate. I've hatched out many babies, they've all been healthy, I've been raised lovely, they've gone to the new homes, I've never had any crazy major problems. But usually, if you prevent them, you can, you can prevent the majority of their sicknesses, you really can, it's just a case of being very vigilant, being very much on the ball, and following your care keeping rules to an absolute T. Water parameter checks, run them at least once every other week. If you've just set up a tank and it's just establishing itself, you have to check them a lot more frequently. So probably two or three times a week until you see that the cycle's kicking in and everything's good and balanced. Water changes, again, I do a 30%, even if not more, to be honest. Never do 100% water change, that's the one thing you can't do. If you do that, you're gonna crash your whole cycle and it'll be like starting off from square one when it comes to your cycling of your filter. So don't do 100% water change. Although, however, you can take out about 50% without causing too much turbulence in the water parameters. So you can do that as well. So water checks, water changes, good food, good balanced food. And of course, I haven't stressed this nearly enough in this video, temperature. Make sure your temperatures are on point. If you need help with how to keep your tanks cold, I have done other videos, which I'll link just up here where you can go and have a look and check out how I do things in regards to keeping your temperatures low. I hope this video has been good to you. I hope it's been informative to the people that need it most. Obviously, there's loads of things, other things that can happen to axolotls when it comes to their health. I haven't gone into depth with anything because I'm not a vet. I'm not a parrot either. But um, anything you're majorly concerned about, I obviously, and I can't stress this enough, always go to a veterinary surgeon that knows what they're on about. So you're looking for an exotic pet vet. So that's it for this week's video. There's going to be a slight change next week. I've got quite an exciting video or maybe two popping up on YouTube. So there's going to be a slight change in plan. Usually I post on today, which is a Monday. But next week it's going to be slightly earlier and it's going to be posted on a Saturday. But I promise the early start, the early slot will definitely be worth it. So until next time, ta-ta for now. I'm going. I need to do something about these creaky floors, it's driving me mad. People will think I'm hungry. So I'm talking to my welcome to Frank's Aquatic. Welcome to Frank's Aquatics. <sighs>